Morning. Morning. How are you? Great. How's your walk? Nice. Awesome. What are you up to? I'm interviewing random people for five minutes about uh, how they arrive at beliefs. Okay. By karma, gods, ghosts. And I keep it, I keep it, it is. I keep it really brief. I time it for five minutes. Uh, but I like to record it so I can, you know, replay. Videotape it? If that's possible. Uh, are you going to air it anywhere? I'll probably put it on my YouTube channel. I could blur your face if you're, if you're worried about it. But um, generally, the talks are so much fun. It might give you a better understanding of what you believe and why than you've ever thought that you had at this point. It's cool. I've been doing it for like two years. Okay. And I'm new to this location. I've been, I've, I've been here with my family and hiked, and I was like, this is the perfect spot because uh, it's quiet, relatively quiet, lighting's good, and it's a diverse group of people. Sure. Do you want to give it a try? Why not? Yes! <laughs> You're awesome! And are you okay if I film you? Yeah. I'd rather you not because I didn't shower today or anything. Can I blur your face? Sure. Okay, I'll blur your face. My name is Anthony. What's Thank your you first bet. name? Nice to meet you. Hi, it's a very pleasure to meet you. Nice pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Yvette. Yvette. Y-V? Yep. E-T-T? Yep. Cool. Yep. E-T-T-E. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, yeah, that's exactly what I do is I just have random... Is this I, a I've hobby? Checked, it's a hobby. Okay. But I have to tell you, what usually happens by the end of even five minutes, a belief that you think you know is true, you may be less certain that it's true by the end of it. Okay. Some people think that's a challenge, and some people are like... Are you trying to get somebody to believe in one certain way? I am trying to... Here's what I'm going to do. That, that's a great question. I'm going to be as neutral as possible. Okay. All I'm going to do is ask questions. Okay. I do don't, you have a goal? I do. My goal is at the end of the talk, or talks, because I really love to run into the same person a couple times. Mm -hmm. What are they doing over there? I don't know. Turning a dog or something? I don't know. My goal is to understand what you believe but even more importantly help you better understand what you believe because sometimes these deeply held beliefs that people hold they just have them and they don't know why people they just have them like yeah i've always believed that but at the end of the talk sometimes it's like yeah why do i think that that's true because it's learned mostly Is there a particular belief that you really think is true, passionately mm -hmm. think it's true, that you want to spend just five minutes chatting about and examining? Can you be more specific? Belief about anything specific? Typically, the fun conversations are ones where you really think it's true, like uh, typically like supernatural stuff, karma, God. Like, do you really think a God exists or do you think karma is a thing? I do. Okay. I'm not really sure exactly what God is. Um, that's kind of something that I've been exploring lately. So Neat. Well, this might be the perfect talk. Yeah. This is cool. Can I time it for five and we'll chat about God? Yeah, sure. Okay. Can you help me understand what your idea of God is? Because everyone's definition of God seems to vary greatly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think God is just energy. It's like the living energy behind everything that exists. Okay. Does this living energy, living energy? Did you say living energy? Yeah. Does this living energy guide you or have a purpose or anything like that? Is it watching you? I don't know that it's watching you. It just is. It just is. Okay. Do you make important decisions in your life because of the existence of this living energy, this God? I do. I think um, if I just, if I need an, to make an important decision, I just try to listen to what my body and my conscious is telling me and whether I feel comfortable with it or not, and I feel like that is God. Oh. When you have an important decision in your life, can you take me through the steps? And you don't have to go into immense detail, but what are the steps that go through your mind? Like, has there been a recent time where you had a big decision in your life and you can sort of use that as a springboard to explain how you use this living energy? Sure, I don't really know that I have a method that I follow every time, um, but 
the last couple of years, I feel like I've been going through a lot of changes and kind of trying to work out the direction of my life. And so I've been paying more attention to how I'm feeling about things, whether it's making me feel uneasy or good. And so lately I've been, um, well, I'm a stay-at-home mom to a six-year-old, and he just started kinder this year. So my next major decision is what I'm going to be doing for work. Ah, okay. Because I definitely feel like I want to return to work, but I'm not sure what I want to do. And so I've been um, trying to figure out which direction I'm going to, whether or not I want to go the safe route and just get a regular job and work the nine to five and and relatively low risk, but I know that I won't be happy there. Or if I want to try and venture on to do something on my own and open up a new business, but risk. So that's where I'm at right now. And um, everything in me tells me that I would just wouldn't be happy and I wasn't born to really work the 95 and that's not really my thing but I'm just, just kind of fearing going and doing something on my own okay. so I'm struggling with that right now <laughs> and then how does this living energy of this God this uh, this idea of a God come into play well I mean I've heard several times that you can't live in faith and fear at the same time and so I've been trying to really um, listen to my feelings about going out and doing something on my own and trying not to be afraid and just having faith that if it's what I'm meant to do, it will work out. Does that make sense? I think so. Are you using faith to know that the living energy is helping you make these decisions, these big decisions in life? I suppose you could call it faith. Um, really, I'm just trying to listen to the levels of comfort and discomfort in my body. Hmm. And that's what I feel like is guiding me. And anything that feels uncomfortable, is I feel like that's God telling me that that's not the right way. Oh, okay. Is there something uncomfortable about the idea of returning back to work? And is it the risk? You mentioned that there's a risk element of it. Only on venturing out and doing something on my own, financially... I'm putting investments in and then failing, um, that sort of thing. Um, okay. Going back to work at a regular nine to five for a company is, you know, relatively low risk. But yeah. I don't want to do it. Okay, okay. How certain are you that there's this living energy and it's this God that's influencing these decisions in your brain, or it's just you doing it? I'm not certain at all, I guess. That's, I mean... If we were to throw this on a scale of belief, 0 to 100, 100%, I'm absolutely certain that there's this living energy God exists and influences me. And 0% is, I have no idea. Like, I have no confidence, it's all doubt. I just have all questions. Where would you be right now that this living energy exists? be about... 80. By any chance, were you at a higher percentage before we started the talk? No. You're at an 80. Yeah. You're, you're still at an 80. Yeah. Okay. I, like I said, I'm, I'm still like exploring yeah. and kind of trying to figure things out. Sure. Sure. Well, we hit our five. Okay. Um, I would love to keep talking with you, but sure. if you... It's fascinating. Isn't it? I, I love it. Can I spend a few more minutes? Yeah. If you want to throw in some opinions, too. Honestly, I don't want to okay. because I don't want to influence you. I don't want to. Um, I, I, I can later. I'd be more than happy to tell you all about my background. Sure. But I really want to just understand how you can be eighty percent sure that there's this living energy, and it uh, it's available to you when you have important decisions to make in your life. How do you actually know that it's real and it's not just you making these choices I don't really know that you know really anything for sure is 80% I think, that's, I think that's I think that's one of the purposes in life it's not to really be sure about anything to kind of be open to different ideas and because otherwise I don't think you like learn and grow if you're absolutely sure about anything 
that's 80% yeah. seem pretty high. <laughs> so like a race here today or something? Or? No. no We're doing good. an interview. Oh, okay. I'll talk to you after. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going. I'm going to, I'm going to look at Golden um, <laughs> Okay, good luck. The camera usually gets people's attention. Yeah, so being open to new ideas is a valuable thing in your mind? It is, yeah. And do you see harm in somebody being absolutely locked into a percentage? Um, I don't know. I mean, really, I just try and focus on what I believe in myself and just let everybody else do their own thing. It's too stressful to try and change people's minds about things and try and, like, change the way they feel about stuff. I just feel like everybody's on their own path, and when they're ready to open up or change, then they will, and if that's not meant for them, then they won't. So just try not to worry about everybody else. Yeah, I think that could probably drive a person mad. Yeah. Like worrying about... Trying to be right, it just makes you angry all the time. But for you, Yvette, do you want to believe things that are true? I just feel like you really just can't know for sure if it's true or not. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yet you're eighty percent sure that this God, this living energy exists. Mm -hmm. Do you have a good reason to be eighty percent confident? Well, I mean, I guess... I guess just from experience, when I've tried to make things happen and um, tr try to control my own life, it really hasn't worked out. And when I've just let it go and said, if it's supposed to happen, it will, and it always has worked out that way. I, I will, yeah. <laughs> For example... Uh, bef if, before you give the example, if you don't mind, you said that things always work out. When things work out, is that your confirmation that there's this living energy that's making it all happen? Yes. I feel like everybody is born for a certain purpose and that if they allow life to do its job, then they will stay on the right path. When something works out, how do you know that it isn't just coincidence and it's this God that did it? I don't, I guess I don't know for sure, but I guess I just feel like it's a comforting thought that that something is working for your benefit in your life, always. I mean, if you just believe in coincidence, it's just not very... <laughs> comforting, I guess, you know? It's just... It calms me. So that's what I choose to believe, I guess. I guess I try and think more positively about everything, and if you just believe in coincidence, then you're either going to have a great life and have great things happen to you, or and those are just out of the blue and not really meant for you, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but believing that there's something out there kind of like steering your life in a positive direction all the time is just comforting, and it makes you not worry as much. Is it discomforting to think that there may not be some higher power making this all happen and it's just coincidence and just what you decide to do personally? Yes, I guess some people might think of it as them being more in control of their life and that might be comforting for them, but it's not for me. I can see how it would work both ways. Do beliefs that give people comfort always mean that they're true? No, I don't think so. I mean, you use the word always. So, I don't think anything is always one way or another. Are they 80% of the time true? <laughs> I don't think so. I'll put it this way. I feel like every belief and action that comes out of love is true, and everything that comes out of fear is not true. Hmm. I guess it depends on where the belief is coming from. 
that gives you comfort. You need fear, I guess. You know, like if a lion is chasing after you, you need to run, be afraid. But when it's just day-to-day decisions, if they're, if you're basing it out of love, and I think that you can't go wrong, and it's, I think you're, if it's coming from fear, then I don't, I don't think it comes from a true place. Well, thank you so very much for your time. I, I really appreciate that, and I have a card. Okay. Um, ideally, I'm, I'm really trying to run to the same person like more than once. That's got my email address on it. Because what I'd love to do is have two or three conversations with the same person and see how the... Remember at the start I was telling you that sometimes people think that they... Ha- they think that they understand their belief, but then at the end of the talk maybe they understand it a little better. Or sometimes they're more confused. I don't want to confuse people. Um, but I would love to, like to have an ongoing dialogue with a person to truly uh, un- examine why, why a person could be 80% sure or 100% sure even that, uh, that a deity exists or that this thing is true or whatever. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Oh, do you have any questions for me? Yeah, you said you were going to talk about your background, what you do a little what, bit. And I'm a stay-at-home dad, okay. uh, but my kids are a little older. Um, they're 14 and almost 12. Uh-huh. So they go to middle school. So I have a little time during the day to do my hobby. But um, I, uh, I hope they don't just, I hope they didn't ruin the interview with their talk. I'm trying to block the sound with my body. Um, do you want to know where I am on the, on the God belief thing? Sure. Okay, I'm... Sorry to disturb you. That's you okay. want to get a quick picture of us? I'm doing an interview right now. Oh, um, interview. Uh, no, yeah, no, I got no, my no, camera. No, that's fine. Yeah, if you don't mind. I didn't realize you were going that's to... Okay, that's okay, that's <laughs> okay. Um, sure. On that scale, that same scale of belief of a higher power, I'm at the two or three percent. Okay. That being said, I'm willing to move up to an 80. Um, but I think personally, I would need something a little bit more than just um, getting comfort from an I from this getting comfort thinking that maybe there is something out there guiding me into the right decisions or not. Like I, I would need personally, I would need evidence. I'm not knocking anyone, anybody, anyone, that that uh, wants to go the other way. But um, when I do have these talks, uh, if anything, I hope it helps people think about the beliefs that they're holding, and if they're truly justified in being so sure. You had mentioned that um, I took my notes here somewhere. That nobody should be 100% sure about anything because you really can't know anything. You should always be open to new ideas, I think you said, or, mm-hmm. or something along those lines. You should always have a little bit of doubt. I'm with you on that. I think doubt is a wonderful thing. Because um, so, I always have questions. I'd like to be 100% sure. Yeah. I've got questions about for everything. I'd like to be 100% sure. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if you do have doubt occasionally and you do have questions, then you're not 100% sure. Yeah. And I do. Have those times. I appreciate your honesty because a lot of people will instinctively say, "I'm 100 percent sure God, uh, there's a God," because I think they they you said even early on you're like people are kind of raised with beliefs they, mm-hmm. they're taught it, and um, that seems to be the the main reason why somebody can say I'm 100 percent sure. But then again, I just like to ask my questions and see well is being raised with a belief a reliable way to know that something is true? Yeah, well they say that. Um I don't know who they are, but they say that a child's beliefs are instilled in them by the time they're six, because um, they're in some sort of like delta hypnotic state until they're until they turn six, and so everything is absorbed, and you really can't change a pers- person's belief after the age of six. And um, and are you hundred percent sure no. that people's beliefs can't be changed? Well, they can be, but it's rooted in the subconscious, and it's hard to change the beliefs that you have in your subconscious. You mentioned that you have a child. Mm-hmm. How old is he or she? Six. Six. Well, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about teaching your child? Does your child have the same belief in this living energy, or how do you plan on approaching that with him or her? You say it's a boy. Yeah, he's a boy. Don't give his name, though. Okay. Okay. Um. I really haven't taught him too much about it. I'm just really like to instill in him at this age that he's here for a purpose. And um, I don't know what that purpose is. 
but he's special and that he has a gift that nobody else has and that's why he's here. Um, and I really think it's important to do just work on his self-confidence at this age and nothing else. Deep question. Mm -hmm. Are you telling him that he's special and has a purpose because you really think he does? Or do you think it's going to just boost his self-confidence and that might end up helping him and pre prepare him better for life? Well, both. Okay. I think everybody has something special that they bring to the world and um, something that nobody else has. And that's why they're here. So everybody has it. And I just want him to know that that maybe he's not great at everything, but there's something that he is better at than anybody else on this planet. He has to find that. This might be a stretch because we've just talked for 10 minutes, but is there anything about this conversation that you think would impact you with regards to how you plan on teaching your child about a higher power or will have no effect at this point? Or what do you, you're not gonna hurt my feelings either way. Um. I don't think so. I mean, just talking about it in general makes you be more conscious of it. I mean, the more you talk about something with somebody, the more you're thinking about it. So, the more you can probably um, keep it a part of the present instead of just a nice idea. Talking about things gets you better clarity as far as what it is you actually believe? No, I'm pretty clear on what I believe. It's just that sometimes in the day-to-day -day hustle of errands and grocery shopping and stuff, you just don't make it a priority. So maybe talking about it will bring it back. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, cool. Do you think you could spend a little time thinking about our talk and asking yourself, if an 80% level of confidence in a belief is the most accurate spot to be? I don't want to really think that I'm going to worry about it too much or think about it too much. I mean, that's why I go on these walks in nature to try and not think. Okay. Because I feel like thinking is probably the root of all my problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be more and not think as much about what I should be doing and trying, trying to like, be more present in the moment and trying to um, just kind of be more aware of what's going on around me, not just trying to overanalyze everything all the time. Hmm. Brings me anxiety. Yeah? Yeah. I can relate to that. You seem like a real thinking person. I am, but um, I hike and garden and you know find activities I listen to podcasts that type of stuff so I'm curious I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm getting plenty of time to to have fun and and smell roses so to uh -huh. speak um, Sam Harris he's a he's he's into um, he's a non-believer but he's also into like spiritual meditation and stuff like this and mm -hmm. But like from a secular, like he'll meditate, but he knows it's a brain state, and yeah. it, he's not communicating with the God, but he's able to get very chill, and he's pretty interesting. There's a great podcast called The Thinking Atheist, which is wonderful, uh, and a few others along those lines. Yeah, I like to generate my own content, to be quite honest. Like I think these conversations blow away those two podcast that I just mentioned because I think that this type of dialogue is fascinating I, I think thousands of people would really enjoy listening to this talk oh. so thousands what kind of books do you read what authors I hate reading you don't read I listen to audiobooks okay I wasn't trying to be cagey with that answer but um, I guess uh, something, maybe something on evolution is interesting to me, or um, psychology. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm finding very interesting these days. Yeah. Mm. Especially with kids, you know, they're, that type of stuff. I've got a girl and a boy, the girl's the older one, so she's getting into her teenage. So it's kind of like child rearing, 
books, that type of stuff. How to? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. I'm curious, do you listen to uh, intelligence quotient debates, IQ squared? No, uh, that sounds really familiar. No, but I, no. They have experts on two opposing sides debate for, and then they have an audience and um, it's probably be really interesting to you since you're trying to change beliefs or get people to kind of shift a little bit, but um, they vote on what they believe, whether they're for or against the okay. notion or undecided, and then they have the debates and then they vote again at the end. Mm. So they have some things on parenting and God and spirituality Interesting. and whether or not you should eat meat. Every. I love that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I have this philosophy, this hypothesis that debates in a one-on-one -on -one talk like we're doing are ineffective. But when you have two people debating, you're not really debating. You just ask I'm not questions. debating. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think it's effective. That's why I'm asking questions, not debating. But I have seen debates and an audience observing those debates and people in the audience will change their minds. Mm -hmm. So debates do work, they have their place. Another reason why I like to have these types of talks is to show other non-believers that there's a better way of talking with believers in karma or God or the supernatural stuff. Because there's a, there's a stereotype of the angry atheist. Mm -hmm. and, why uh, do you feel like you have to talk to anybody about it at all? Well, because I want to model that behavior for other non-believers, but also I want to help people. If there's somebody that's 100% sure that Jesus died for them, and it affects how they vote, and they want to put Bibles in the school, or something like that, that ultimately will affect me, and it's going to affect you too. So, when it comes down to it, I want to live in a community where people believe things that are true. Or, it sounds like you want people to believe what's true and you believe what's true and you want people to believe what you believe because it's true for you how do you mean well you just said that you want people believe to believe what is true and that you're basically a non-believer and that if they want to put bibles in the school then that affects you and sounds to me like you're trying to get people to change their mind to believe what you believe like more of what you believe i think so yeah I don't think I could argue with that. But so that, is it okay for you to believe what you believe and let them believe what they believe? I'm willing to change my mind on it. I, I think I mentioned to you before, like, but I would need to have a good reason to move up the scale to it. I'm not saying that there is no God and I want everyone to abandon their God belief. What I'm hoping for is to encourage people to re-examine the beliefs that they do hold and see if the method they use to get there is reliable. And I'm completely willing to do the same thing. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Have you ever, were you at zero and now you're moving up to one I think I was at a one um, and I think maybe I'm more like two or three. Huh. Like I think it's, it's possible that there might be some deity like that created all this. But um, I, I think it's highly unlikely. But I, I think maybe a year ago, or let's say three years ago, when I was kind of going through my angry atheist phase, I'd be like, there's no God. I'm 0%. I know there's no God. Well, no, I don't know there's no God. Right? And is that like a source of, does that give you a sense of power in yourself? And like, you can control your own life if there's no God? Is that an empowering no, thought to you? I don't know. That's a good question. I think it's somewhat liberating. I think my life is better. I don't want to influence you because I think we have opposing maybe views on, on how this higher power influences us. But since you're asking, I think my life is wonderful and it is even better without any gods sort of dictating where I'm going. That I'm not doing this to make some some higher power happy. Mm -hmm. I like just being a good person because I want to be a good person. Right. I'm not mugging people or stealing cars or whatever. I got. I, I just don't want to do that. Right. I, I'm just good because I want to be good. I, I want my kids to live in a good in a nicer world than it was when I was here. Mm -hmm. You know, and their kids. 
So I guess that, that's my motivation. I think I would be a little disappointed at some level that there was a God that's set up the stage and we're all just acting in it. Yeah. Well, I think that's where the love and the fear comes in, too. It's like, you can be good because you want to be good and you love the world and you, you want your kids to be happy and safe. And then you can be good because you fear what will happen if you're not good. So, I mean, it just depends on whether or not you're afraid or not, if you're doing it out of fear. Are your actions, when you make big decisions, do you factor in fear of being punished by the higher power? No, because I don't fear, I don't feel like, like it's a punishing entity, I guess, like a lot of people do. Yeah. That's why I stopped going to church. What were you before? Um, I Denomination? Say just Christian, non-denominational. Yeah. Okay. But I stopped going to church because I just didn't believe that part of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so many people, you know, um, are, are afraid of what might happen to them if they don't live by every single rule. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people that are paralyzed with fear. Um, I, talk, I talked to a woman here uh, yeah, two days ago. Yes. We, we talked about karma, mm -hmm. but she was really wrapped up in it. Like, she was even saying, oh, I just jinxed myself, or oh, now I need to be, make sure I'm really good all day long now. It had a grip on her. And that saddens me. She has a right to do that. I'm not saying... I, I never argue that she doesn't have a right to believe in whatever she wants. I do find the lack of a belief in a God somewhat liberating. It was probably the word that I would use. Yeah, I just think that that's what it comes down to. You either live your life out of fear or you live out your life out of love. And I feel like your body will tell you. Is your body always right? Yeah. So like when you decided to talk to me, what was, was this higher power involved in that decision or was it you? Well, I didn't stop to ask the question. But when you agreed to, to talk with me, was there any fear or did no. you think it was You don't look especially threatening, you know? But I just, I guess I'm just in that kind of mood. Some, some, some days I just don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to say hello to anybody. I'm just, I'm just in that mood I to guess today. My mood and you being here, it's like, oh, why not? Were you just saying though that you're always correct when you use your feelings to make decisions? Well, kind of contradicting myself because I say always. I mean, nothing is always any certain way, but most of the time. 80 percentage? Yeah. Like when I look back on things that I've done in my life that I had a feeling that I shouldn't do that I did, they ended up being the wrong thing. So. I can't think of any time in my life that I thought, oh, I shouldn't be doing this, and then I did it, and it turned out to be the right thing. So. When you look back at those instances and constant reaffirmation that you're making the right choices, you then somehow conclude that there's this higher power making it all happen. I don't know that the higher power is making it happen, but I just think that if you're listening, I think there's a choice. You have your own choice of which way you want to go. I mean, if you're talking about God in, in, in the traditional way, I mean, it's all about free will, you know? He gives you the choice. Um, but if you just sit and listen to whatever energy is around you, the way you're feeling, I feel like that's the guidance. I feel like it's help and then you can choose to listen to it or not. And every time that I've chosen to go against the way I feel, um, or what I know is right, or an uneasy feeling, it's always been the wrong choice. Are these choices that you're making in your brain always you choosing them? Or is yes. it... Like 
I don't feel like I'm possessed by something that people are making me make decisions and do things that I, that I don't choose to do. That's crazy. How do you differentiate the decisions that you're making from the influencing of the higher power, the God? I feel like just the higher power is, is giving you signals all the time. And whether or not you choose to listen to them or not is up to you. Hmm. I feel like you make the choice, but but there's always like a guiding energy. How do you hear about the signals? How do you get the signs? It's just like, you know, those little cartoons like in Tom and Jerry where he has like a little devil on one side, a little angel on the other side. It's like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Or the devil's like, just go ahead and do it. You know, I feel like that's kind of what happens. There's like a different thoughts. Go ahead and do it. No, don't do it. You shouldn't be doing this. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know, and you just have to choose which one you're going to listen to. So the God is sending the signals. You're seeing them, and then you're choosing them. Mm-hmm. How do you know that that it's not you generating the signals and then listening to them? I guess I don't. Like I said, I'm not totally sure about anything, but I don't I guess it could be. You don't even know what you is, really. Pardon? I don't even know what you is. Like when you say you. Like, are you talking about just my brain? I guess it doesn't really even matter. How so? <laughs> well, something is telling you to do something or not doing something, whether it's your brain or God or whatever. It's just... Oh, I see what you're saying. You just have to make a decision on... Uh, okay. That. Are you saying that regardless of if it's you sending the signals to yourself or the God sending the signals to you, it doesn't really matter who's sending the signals as long as you're getting them? I don't want to put words in your mouth, so that's not what you're saying. No, I'm just trying to think it out. Because I want to say yes right off the bat. Yes, I would have to say yes to that. To, it doesn't matter who's doesn't, sending the signals. It doesn't matter. Because whether it's God telling you what to do, or yourself telling you what to do, and you just want to believe that there is no God, and that you just have to listen to yourself, um, I don't think there's a difference between God and yourself. I mean, I just think it's part of you. And that, that God just lives in everything and, and He lives inside of you. And so I just don't, I don't see a separation there. But... That's a huge statement to say that it may not even be a God, it may just be yourself. Maybe it doesn't matter who's sending the signal, or if it's really yourself. I think it's just all part of one thing. I think God is a part of me and you and the trees and the air and, and every living thing. Is it because it makes you feel comfortable to think that that's the case? Um, I, it does bring me comfort. I don't know that that's what I believe because it brings me comfort. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure things out. Absolutely. I really enjoyed talking with you. Thanks. And uh, maybe I'll see you again? Yeah. I'm here all the time, actually. Oh, yeah? Couple okay. Well, good. I'm going to try to be here the rest of this week and um, next week, probably. Okay. Yeah. I hope what? you're not one of those people who's going to like make me seem retarded on your, on no, your channel and no, edit things and to... I'm not going to edit a damn thing. Okay. Uh, I'm, maybe if I say, like, if I stutter, I might get rid of the stutter part of it. Thing is you're on the totally other side of the spectrum. I will not edit a thing. And, and in fact, um, I would like to ask you if you want to take some time to think about the blurring part of it. I will blur it if I don't hear from you, but um, I would really love it. It's more enjoyable for people to see the facial expressions and that type of stuff. Yeah, I would rather you blur it. Okay. 
just because I haven't seen your channel before, I'm not familiar with you, and I don't know what you do with it. So. Absolutely. No, I understand. It's good to be skeptical. All right, cool. Not uh, that you will blur it anyways. I don't know. I will. No, I will. Cause, and people will be listening to this and thinking, why didn't he blur it if I didn't blur it? So I will blur it. Um, Please don't wear your sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll blur it. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll see you wrong. We can pick yeah. it up again. Sure. Okay. I'm just curious. Like, how many people do you talk to every day? <sighs> Well, if, when I come out, it's not every day, but if I, weather permitting, if it's a nice day, I could try to come out. Maybe four or five. Oh, okay. But um, they're usually much shorter conversations. Every once in a while, I get somebody that really, it's a, just a fascinating talk like we had. Do you find a lot of people that are closer to your belief? Because this is, you know, this is Texas. Um, like when I was at the university, I would say one out of five students were non-believers. And I would still have the talk because a lot of them would say, I know there's no God. So I just start asking my questions and oftentimes they say, yeah, you can't really be that sure. There's no God. I just started coming here because I want to talk to an older demographic. <laughs> no offense, but I think we're about the same age. Because uh, I've talked to so many younger students and I want, to, I want to just kind of talk to older people. And One out of five is not that. That's who admitted it. Absolutely. Some people, some people, on camera told me that they believed, and then when I turn and turn off the camera, they're like, "Let me tell you what I really think now." So uh, maybe it's a little higher. That's weird. Might be one. Of oh. So yeah. It's weird. Still kind of weird. Huh. It's not like you're their parent or something. No, but people can see the footage. So yeah. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. I'm gonna go home and look at your channel and see. Okay, yeah, cool.